Platformer games are perhaps the most common type of game made in GDevelop, and that's probably because it's so easy to do. This video will show you the basics of getting the platformer game working. GDevelop includes several types of game examples. If you click on Create New Project, you'll get some examples to choose from. The first one is the platformer. If you click on that, you'll see a simple game. It's very small. Just to show off the basics, and we'll walk through it. If we hit play, we have a player that falls to the ground. If you go left and right on the arrow keys, you will make the player move left and right. And I believe space or shift are the jump keys. And that's it. That's, that's the, the controls that are built in. You can um, go through this example. And do you notice how... Uh, for instance, the cactus, I do not stand on top of or don't get stopped by it. This wall stops me. The ground stops me, obviously. And then this ground block stops me. And that's just a behavior that we're going to assign to those sprites. Now look at these ones. These ones you can actually jump through. That's what they, they're actually called, is jump through. This one, not a jump through. It's just a regular platform object, so it'll stop you from falling, you can't run into it, and you can't obviously jump through it. So the, th the types are platform, jump through, and here's the third type, ladder. So ladders, once you're on them, if you hit up, you will attach to them, and once you're attached, you can go up or down with the arrow keys. So left, right, up, down, and space releases you from the ladder. Okay, that's it. That's what's built in. Let's see if we can start our own game to show you the basics. We'll start a new scene. So completely blank scene. Let's create a player object. Which one should we pick? Let's pick Gordon. Gordon looks cool. All right. Oh, he might be really small. <laughs> okay. There's 14 animations. That's great. The asset store has such good stuff available to you. Okay, he's small, but should be fine. All right, so Gordon's in our scene. Um, we haven't added any behaviors. If you hit play, he'll do his animation. In fact, his animation is always this top one, the aerial swing. Let's make his idle the default. So we'll pull the idle up here. And we'll, loop is already selected, so it should look like this. Okay. So we have play. Okay, there he is. He's going to do his idle thing. If we start the game without any behaviors, he'll just be part of the background. To add a, a platformer behavior, you click on the sprite, click behaviors, add behavior to the object, platformer character. This is the controllable character that can jump and run on platforms. And these are the settings. You can uh, change them uh, right now, and that'll be at the start of the game. They'll have those settings. You can also change these settings using actions. Now that he has that uh, behavior added, what's going to happen? Well, he'll start falling like like gravity has been applied to him now. So that's the first thing that happens is the platformer behavior adds gravity. We need something that's going to stop him from falling. So let's create ground. Let's pick some ground for him to land on. So I just picked this object, the tiled sprite, and without any behaviors, it's just going to be part of the background. Still didn't stop him. Let's add a behavior. And so instead of platformer character, this is actually just a platform. Now let's try it. There you go. So the platformer object stops him from falling. You can also make obstacles that they can jump on. And it's very easy to do. Let's, um, let's make a jump through ob obstacle next, and then we'll do a ladder. So let's do jump through. Oh, we could just make, we could pick almost anything. I'll pick this brown panel. So this will be our, oh, it's so big. We have to shrink it. This will be our jump through. We'll just connect it. 
I'm going to turn on the grid. The grid helps um, line things up. Okay. All right. We didn't give it any behaviors yet. Let's give it the platform. And the type will be jump through. So lands on top, cannot jump through here, can jump through here, and, and gets uh, stays on top. Let's add a ladder. I don't know if there's a ladder. There is. Let's try this one. So we'll add the ladder. It's a really big ladder. We'll just add it here. I wonder what, I'll try adding two, see if they uh, work well together. Now let's do a behavior. We're going to add the platform object. This will be the ladder uh, type. Okay, so whoops, let's just go to the ladder. So the ladder doesn't stop us, obviously. It's kind of looking like nothing at this point. But if you hit the up arrow, is when that's what makes the player grab onto it. If you're wondering why we're on the backside of this ladder, it's a great question. It's because in GDevelop, the front to back order is based off the order they were created. So we created this object first, and the most recent object is here. So it's, think of it like laying down pieces of paper. We laid that down, and then we laid this one last on top, right? So that's why it's on the back. That can be changed easily. It's, it's uh, the Z order is what changes that. So I'm just going to select all three of these. And see the Z order? If we make it zero, that'll go to the back. He's probably going to be Z order one. So the higher the number, that's how it is. high it is up on the stack. So now he's one, and that's zero. So now he's on the back side. Oh, it looks like it didn't apply to all three. So let me highlight the back one, the bottom one here. It's the order zero, zero, zero. OK, Z order is fixed. Now he's in front of the, the ladder. And you just kind of stay on until you go off the side, or if you jump. Let me show you real fast how you can change some of these things in uh, events. So one of the most common things you want to do is use alternative controls. So if you want to do, instead of arrow keys, you want to do ASDW. You can check for, let's just try the A key, which is the usually the left key pressed. A, we're going to click on our object and see these options and controls. Under controls we're going to simulate pushing left. So this is left, this is right, using arrow keys. But if I push A, A now works. Uh, D doesn't because we didn't program it. Let's, let's add the D. So we'll choose the D key. And we'll simulate pressing right. So you can see how you can replace uh, the original keys still work, but now A and D work. This is this is A and D. This is left and right. So you can replace all those keys. If you want to stop the uh, original keys, like the arrow keys, from working, you go to behaviors and default controls. If you turn off default controls, and we play. The arrow keys do nothing now. The space key does nothing. Only the new keys that we've mapped will work, like the A and the and the D. So that's how you can change your controls. You can uh, even use it for uh, gamepad or other inputs. Let's say you want to give your player an upgrade, like um, oh, let's see, do we have any mushrooms? We'll make him eat a mushroom and get twice as big. Mushroom. We're going to do a scene. 
if he is in collision with a mushroom, let's make him twice as big. I'm actually going to use a tween for him, that. So we'll give him a tween behavior. Tween. Now we can do tween actions on him. Okay, he, he's in collision with the mushroom. Trigger once. We'll delete the mushroom. We will um, make him twice as big. So we're going to do a tween, object scale tween. So we're going to go to twice as big, grow. We're going to do it over one and a half seconds. And we'll just do linear. Um, let's try this. OK, so he's going to now get twice as big. Um, now here's where we want to make another thing. He should be able to jump higher, right? I mean, that's at least an option we can choose. So if we go to these options here, we can do a jump speed. And we're going to make it twice as big. So not only is he twice as, twice as um, big in physical size, he now can jump twice as high. Let's see what that looks like. OK, we're going to go eat this mushroom. Nice, twice as big. We'll turn the default controls back on. OK, so this is how high he jumps normally. We'll show you what it looks like down here. See how I can barely make it up? Let's grow. So we grew in size, and we increased our jump speed. Look at that, jumping off the uh, map. So this is how you can like dynamically adjust the platform using these actions. Something else that you may want to do is to change your animations. You may want to use conditions. So if you click on your player, and you see these options, is falling, is moving, is on floor. So if you want to say, if a player is jumping, let's change his animation. Change the animation by name. Let's just see if there's one called jump. Wait, oh, there is one called jump. OK. And we'll do a trigger once, because we only want him to trigger that jump animation one time. Let's, let's see if this animates it. OK, so he did start his jump. But he actually, once he was done with jumping, he went, he just stayed in the jump animation. So how about another one where we do Gordon is on the floor. Now let's change that to idle. OK, so this is idle. He's just breathing, jump, and back to idle. Looks like there is a falling animation. Let's see what that one looks like. So let's do Gordon is falling. Change his animation to falling. OK, jumping, f jumping, falling, and idle. Jumping, falling, idle. We'll grow, jumping, falling, idle. OK, there's a, fa there's a falling example. OK, I think you can start building your own platformer game now. It's really easy, and I look forward to seeing what you do. I do want to put a plug in for the game incubator that we've created on Victorious Games. If you have a new game that you're starting and you want to have people give you feedback on it and bounce ideas off of someone else, come in to our Victorious Games Discord. I'll put a link on the bottom of this video. You get a dedicated channel just for your game. So you can use that to get a community started around your game. And we'd love to see you there and chat about your game. Thanks, everybody. See you guys. Thanks for watching.